oncology is marching along and helping patients living longer and better. What really matters is a journey. The natural landscape is fantastic. We carry the Greek sun sign everywhere we go. Those touch points, those interactions, these human beings to human being interactions. You know, mentorship is such an important concept. We're very happy here with episode three. Uh, you know, episode one, we're very happy to have Giuseppe Curliano. Love his discussion on, on TDXD. And it kind of talked about how he started in, you know, Milan. And it kind of ended up as a global leader in oncology. And then in episode two, we talked about D Dr. Joshua Brody at Mount Sinai. He kind of followed his dad when he was 14 years old and started going into the lab and just developed this passion for oncology. And now he's doing CAR T cells. And we we're talking about bispecific T cell engagers that are moving into the solid tumor. And so today we have episode three. And uh, we're very happy to have a global leader and also a great friend, uh, Dr. Petros Grievous. Uh, he's a full professor at the University of Washington, uh, director of the GU Clinical Trials, and also just a great person in general. So, Petros, great to see you, man. How you been? Great to see you, Chandler. Thank you for having me. Such a great pleasure to be here with you discussing, as always. What a great experience we had, you know, in the last several years, seeing the field moving forward across tumor types, oncology is marching along and helping patients living longer and better. So it's great to see that uh, a transformation happening. We still have a lot of work to do, but always great to see you and discuss with you. Absolutely. And, and you know, it's all about patient care. And I tell you, like in the 2010s, we had like very little data. A and then like we were using, you know, neoadjuvant chemotherapy, but now there's an explosion of new data, and we're gonna be talking about the Niagara. The Niagara answers questions, but it also raises more questions. And so I think this is where the field is moving forward. It's the golden age of oncology. But, you know, for me, I wanna kind of share with the audience, you know, Dr. Petros Grievous. You know, tell us about a little about yourself, Petros. I, I know for me, getting to know you, like you're from Greece. Can you give us a little background on, you know, what it was like growing up and what caught you into going into oncology? Absolutely. Thanks for asking this. You know, it's always uh, interesting to go back in time, right, and try to uh, reinvent ourselves, understanding the why, right? This is a very important point in life, understanding the why. I always talk to my mentees and trainees and say, you have to know the why, why you do something and why you make a decision. So go back in time, as you mentioned, I'm from Athens, Greece. I uh, was born and uh, was raised in Athens. And my parents always had this, uh, you know, uh, uh, intellect and curiosity about things in life. And I was definitely very positively influenced by them. And uh, uh, they always try to um, uh, support uh, this notion of uh, seeking knowledge and, and try also to self-improve, you know, this continuous self-improvement process. These are characteristics that are definitely Oh, to my parents, among many other things. And, you know, back in the day, back in the 80s, Chandler in Greece, you know, cancer was kind of mystery, was kind of an enigma, a riddle. And, you know, people did not talk about it much. You know, uh, you know, I was remembering I was a kid and, and someone, you know, maybe in the neighborhood, uh, or some family, friends, someone died of cancer and people did not talk much about it. It was kind of a, you know, a, a forbidden word, you know, kind of a unknown entity. And, and to me, it was very intriguing. You know, why someone died of this cancer mysterious disease? We, wh why this is happening? We have to do something about it. We have to change this. We have to save people's lives. And I always wanted to pursue medicine as a career. And through that process, oncology became really, really uh, a very interesting focus for me early on. And of course, this was uh, even enhanced more in medical school. And of course, the very, very positive impact and influence from mentors uh, definitely steered me in the direction of oncology. And I'm very, very delighted uh, and excited that I, ha I was uh, 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 lucky enough to know early on what I want to do. And, and with the support of many other people, uh, I was able to pursue that uh, very, very exciting career. Yeah, I think it's great, Petros. I mean, just listening to you, like 
one of the things about us is just you know the the mystery we're like detectives we like puzzles and and you know that's fair what your oncology is like it's very intellectually stimulating i mean you know the patients are the forefront but everybody deserves individualized care not just for the best treatment in terms of the science but the emotional and the mental aspects of it. And just hearing your story about like how it's a mystery, right? When you first noticed it in the 80s, when you were maybe younger and you're like, what's going on here? So that developed like a knowledge, a spark of curiosity. I think it's amazing. And so uh, now tell us about, you know, uh, after, you know, you started working very closely with different mentors and, and becoming like, you know, the GU director and professor at the University of Washington. Tell us a little about that uh, as well. You know, one of my favorite poems, Chandler, uh, you know, is Ithaca by a Greek poet. Uh, the name is uh, Constantine Kavafi. And uh, this poem was really, really about the journey in life. And uh, the, the uh, of course, uh, uh, a story in that poem was the uh, Odyssey, right? That uh, uh, Ulysses left Troy and, you know, was trying to get back home. It uh, took him about 10 years or so to, to reach the destination. But, but the poem is about the adventures and the occurrences unexpected or expected in life. And what really matters is a journey. What, what really matters is that continuous journey in life that you start, you know, from, from somewhere, from your origin, and you try to go to the destination. The destination is only the reason why, you you know, you, you go through the journey, but the journey matters. So I think extrapolating from that poem, that story, same thing, you know, with many other people in life and including myself, you know, started in a, in a country which I love, as everybody knows, I, I mention Greece very frequently uh, when, I, when I talk about something and uh, those experiences in early life, of course, give you direction, give you a passion, give you, let's say, your North Star. And for me, North Star and the why was to help other people, was to be of support, add some value, provide some comfort. And this was really, really motivating for me. And medicine was definitely the perfect conduit to do that. And uh, I was very honored uh, to uh, enter medical school when I was 17 years old. And uh, you have to take exams in Greece, you know, when you finish high school, graduate, you go to university. There's no college uh, like we have in the US, which is like, you know, college acts as a buffer, right? You try to figure out yourself what you want to do. Uh, in, in Greece, it's in many other systems uh, in other countries, it's a direct transition from high school to uh, uh, the university and uh, medical school in my, uh, in my uh, situation. Uh, and I was uh, uh, remembering uh, very, very vividly, uh, I was 17 years old, had to move to a different city called Patra, uh, different than my name. Many patients ask me, <laughs> Petros, your University of Patra, what's going on? I said, it's just a, <laughs> a, a different different name, P-A-T-R-A. It's a beautiful city in Greece. It's the third biggest city after Athens and Thessaloniki. And in Patra, uh, I had uh, the opportunity and honor to interact with great mentors, uh, who definitely influenced my uh, direction uh, towards oncology, enhance, as I mentioned before, this passion. And uh, many of them had uh, studied or had uh, practiced or done research in the United States. So definitely there was a positive influence in that direction. They instilled, you know, this thought in my head, you know, they, they planted the seed that I had to look in the United States as a environment, as a place, as a country where I can thrive even more and, and learn and, and do my uh, training. So after I, I graduated from medical school, uh, I decided to pursue uh, my PhD sequentially after MD. And many people ask me, Petrus, why you did your PhD after your MD? It's not the classical, you know, it's not like the, the conventional pathway. And I always joke, I said, you know, guys, in Greece, the last names are very long, right? They have very, <laughs> very, very many syllables, right? And for me, it's only two syllables, like grievous. So I had to add letters. Grievous MD PhD, right? So that's, my, <laughs> <laughs> that's my joke about it. But the real reason was my passion to learn about research even more. Uh, I want to go to the lab, understand the you know all the methodologies of research, you know, by statistics, by informatics. Uh, I learn about work in the lab and techniques, and uh, have a more let's say. Um, uh, a balanced approach when it comes to research and uh, learn more about it and, and think about how to ask a relevant question and how to try to answer that relevant question. So it was very helpful to me to have this great training. And uh, at the same time, Chandler, 
uh, I decided to go to the United States and come uh, in this uh, country to pursue my clinical and, and further uh, research training. So while I was doing my PhD and work in the lab and, you know, try to develop those skills and, and complement, you know, the, the clinical skills with lab-based skills, I was uh, taking the USMLE exams and, and I was honored to uh, be able to come to the United States uh, and do my residency in Philadelphia, a uh, fantastic environment at Hahnemann Hospital, Drexel University. Three years there, learned a lot about clinical medicine. Uh, every patient, of course, is, a, is an opportunity to learn more, uh, more about the patient and the and the human being behind, you know, a particular illness. Uh, but also uh, learn about clinical skills and, and develop important clinical questions. From there, I went to Ann Arbor, Michigan, University of Michigan. Fantastic environment. Did my fellowship there in hematology oncology. Great environment. Uh, great mentors. You know, within a month, uh, you know, after I started my fellowship, Chandler, I committed uh, to do research in GU oncology, and I saw the light, sort of speaking. And specifically, particularly in bladder cancer, uh, and we'll talk more about it if you want. It was just a need, right? We had to move the field forward. You know, it was a stagnant, I would say, uh, uh, disease for many years uh, uh, because of challenges, understanding the disease biology, lack of funding, lack of visibility, and of course, um, uh, it was a, it was a perfect uh, uh, a storm in a way. When in the uh, in the decade that followed that, uh, we had a, a lot of uh, great people working that disease and we had made huge strides forward helping our patients. From there, I finished my fellowship uh, uh, in 2013. I stayed an extra year as a junior faculty at the University of Michigan, wonderful, again, supportive environment, great mentors. And then I moved to Cleveland Clinic. Uh, this was, I think, July 2014. Uh, a fantastic place, working with uh, great people there. I learned a lot. Again, learning is a continuous process. I stayed in Cleveland for about three and a half years. Uh, a wonderful experience. We definitely you know, had a huge development of the bladder cancer program with the help of colleagues and, uh, of course, research uh, staff, research nurses, and uh, and a wonderful uh, environment, and, of course, multidisciplinary collaborations. And I moved to Seattle. Uh, literally, uh, I started he here, uh, Sandra, it was January 2nd, 2018, almost seven years ago, wow. and I love it. It's a great environment. I, I, I learn every day, and it's a fantastic team, you know, helping our patients, multidisciplinary clinic, research, education, outreach, a fantastic place to be in the great city. Oh, very similar to Athens. I mean, I know you mentioned that before. Like, if you think about it, like, especially when you're flying in or just the water's there, you know, you got the beautiful blue water and then you got the, you know, the, the views. And what are your thoughts about that, Petros? Would you say it's very similar to Athens in a way? You know, I was actually interviewing candidates for the fellowship program the other day, and we had this, you know, Zoom call with all the people in the Zoom. And of course, uh, I had to comment and, and the truth and say, you know what, <laughs> Seattle is my favorite city outside outside Greece. It's the most beautiful city I have been outside Greece, uh, and I I believe it. It's a great place, uh, full of nature. The natural landscape is fantastic. Uh, you know, it's such a great environment to be natural environment. Mountains all over you are surrounding the city of course the water you pointed out you know you have the Puget Sound you know you have the Pacific Ocean on the west you have uh, unbelievable number of lakes and rivers and you know little fjords and other you know natural elements that uh, parks nature uh, of course it's raining and, and you know people tell me Petros can you survive this continuous drizzling in Seattle and I say you know what we carry the Greek sun sign everywhere we go and uh, that's <laughs> it's uh, you know we work hard and, uh, you know, uh, we have great uh, team and colleagues and friends. And uh, uh, Seattle overall is a beautiful uh, place to be. And uh, I remember uh, I first came here, Chandler, I don't know if I ever told you, in 2009 to interview for fellowship. Uh, and I remember it was a beautiful city. But when I moved here, I realized even more, you know, the breadth of the options and, and all the amazing things you can do in this city. Of course, we all work very hard. So the, the major limitation is time, right, to find enough time. <laughs> to enjoy this wonderful landscape. I mean, you think about like the, the the mountains, you know, whether if you look go hiking or if you like to go boating or, you know, Vancouver's not too far away either. And, and so Portland, I mean, there's just so many beautiful places, especially if you like the outdoors, kind of because we, we all need balance. You know, we have a very tough situation where we want to help the sickest of the sickest. But sometimes for you, me and our mentees and all of our mentors, like 
We need to recharge. I think that's one of the things that I learned from Dr. Jamie Abraham, who's my mentor, is just to kind of like you have to recharge your own battery. And it sounds like you're doing that a great job there, Petros. You know, you, you mentioned Jamie, such a great uh, person. I, I work closely with uh, Dr. Abraham when I was in Cleveland Clinic. We, we worked together uh, in efforts to engage the community and do community outreach in underserved populations. Uh, and uh, I, one of the things I'm really proud of was a study we did together with Dr. Abraham, uh, trying to uh, work together with local leaders in a very underserved area, uh, very close to Cleveland, Ohio. And we try to uh, do educational um, uh, initiatives and do you know, a, a men's health day, talking about uh, the importance of primary care, but also prostate cancer screening. And we did an interventional study, actually, wow. with uh, uh, an, a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, a way to try to uh, improve upon education uh, in that community and help them do inform and shared decision making about prostate cancer screening. L many lessons learned. We learned a lot uh, from that exercise and process. We actually published this wow. uh, together with Jim and others and uh, one of our mentees there. And uh, it was so important, you know, uh, it opens your eyes about the disparity that exist in healthcare uh, and the role we all have to try to address those disparities and work towards, you know, uh, inclusion, uh, equity and diversity in all we do. And uh, definitely, definitely have a, a very, very fond memories working with Jamie. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you really touched on like, you know, one person can make a difference. That's one of the things that I learned from Dr. Abraham. You know, yes, we see patients and provide the best care that we can try to give, but also from a global scale, like we do all of these different meetings, advocacies, because of the advocacy groups and the people and the patients and the families, they're also lifting a lot for the just global care of bladder cancer. And then also the mentees. I mean, we have so many touch points that we have every single day, whether it be the medical students, the residents or the fellows and, and guiding them, helping them. Because we're all, at the end of the day, we're all learning and just to kind of help out all the different people around us and also be helped. What do you think about the various touch points that we have, Petros, to try to make a difference on people around us? You said it perfectly, Chandler. You know, the life is a totality of those moments, right? Those touch points, those interactions, these human beings to human being interactions. This is so refreshing. And I think during the pandemic, we all got reminded that human interactions are so important. And I agree with you, those touch points, you know, these relationships we form over time, the relationship with our mentors, our teachers, our professors, with our peers, our colleagues, our friends, our mentees and trainees, these are amazing, very sacred relationships, right? Very important. And I think we all get better. We all learn through these experiences and these interactions. You know, mentorship is such an important concept. I think I have shared with you in the past that, you know, my father was a teacher and, uh, you know, his life was dedicated. He was committed to support younger uh, students, uh, trainees, mentees. And the, the concept of uh, teaching education and mentorship was ingrained, you know, in my mindset early on, you know, by seeing him doing that. And uh, my mother was also, you know, uh, active in the Ministry of Health in Greece at the time. And the, she was doing the same thing, helping younger uh, folks get into their careers. And I think it's so important, you know, what you're doing, what many colleagues are doing uh, around the world, you know, investing time, effort, and energy Energy to stimulate and 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 cultivate talent, right? It's very important to nurture talent, uh, and I think our relationship with mentees it's uh, it, it's so important. I think it's so refreshing and makes us better. Uh, I personally feel uh, that I I learned every time I interact with mentees. They teach me a lot. I try to support them in every way. My father was telling me, Chandler, you know, it will be sometimes in your life that you will have no time. You will be so busy, but you have to create time for things that matter. And he was right. And, and mentorship is definitely one of those things that matters so much. And we always create time. And you're doing the same thing yourself. You got to make time. I mean, we have to prioritize, you know, kind of crystallizes all the things that we can do. There's more time than we even uh, think about. It's just that we just have to kind of think about it, you know. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.